The case of racism has emerged. This time around, the storm is at the doors of Chandarana, a food plus supermarket, one of the oldest retail stores in Kenya. Made last week, a promotion communication from Chandarana leaked, sparking an avalanche of criticism online, with many people expressing anger over what was interpreted as racial profiling. Chandarana Food Plus supermarket did an apology on Saturday, blaming the mess on a new intern employee. But the online pressure continued into the weekend, prompting Nairobi City County Governor Mike Mbubisonko to order for a cancellation of the retail store. That order only sparked more activity online with people hailing and denouncing it in equal measure. And today, the director of Chandarana, Deepan Thakar, wrote to Governor Sonko apologizing for the incident. We have been chasing an interview with the management of the retail store the whole day today, but they did not grant us an opportunity despite promising to do so. Good evening and welcome to the program. This is the big story right on KTN News. My name is Yusuf Ibrahim and tonight the misfortunes dogging Chandarana is one of communication flow, law and morality. And on the show tonight I shall be talking to communication consultant Mark Bichachi, a lawyer Ashoya Biko. But before that or before they can talk to us, let's cross over live to our lead reporter Sophia Onuna who has been out and about getting the facts on this incident. Sophia, good evening. Good to see you. Welcome to the program of this chilly Nairobi night. And it seems things are still getting hotter for Chandarana supermarket, right? Yeah, especially cold out here, Yusuf. At least you're in studio. But yes, for Chandarana, it gets cold in Nairobi. The heat is stunning up for them. And you mentioned that second statement and apology they sent out today. So first to get things clear, on one hand, there was that communication that came out from the governor yesterday announcing a revocation of the, of, of the licenses for these supermarkets. However, there is yet to be formal communication given to the supermarket or at least released to the media. I spoke to the governor earlier this morning and he indicated to me that it would be coming out in just a few hours. Spoke to his head of communication. Again, it was promise after promise that that formal and official communication of this uh, revocation of the license for Chandrana uh, Supermarket Limited will be coming out. But that is yet to happen. However, that second apology, uh, again, Chandrana coming out to say that uh, they are very apologetic of this, uh, highlighting the number of employees they they have uh, the practice and the years they have been in operation in Kenya again uh, saying that this was inadvertent and that they are taking measures in as far as the discipline, disciplinary action is concerned because the outrage has been overpowering and has continued on up until this point but as you also mentioned yes we've been reaching out to Chandrana uh, themselves many calls have been made many promises as well but clearly all parties at this particular point careful to come out and speak and so we'll have to wait to see how that plays out. But let's get to understand uh, what the directive, its implica implications and its legality, because there have been questions around whether the governor has that jurisdiction. And tonight I speak with advocate Steve Ogola. Thank you for making time for us. Uh, did Governor Sonko um, act within his mandate and jurisdiction in seeking to revoke the license of Fort Chandarana? I think, Sophia, there are two issues at play. One is the substantive question of uh, anti-discrimination laws and their enforcement. So within that question, yes, every public official, state officer, is duty-bound within their jurisdictional mandate to enforce the constitution, which is the primary or basic law. So at the substantive level, yes, he could do that. But it's the other question which has been left unattended to, which is the procedural safeguards, which means that within the same constitutional framework, you cannot condemn someone unheard, which basically means that the statement issued, the, the communication that was leaked out already reveals there some, could be some design or some policy that is uh, discriminatory in nature. What the county government of Nairobi ought to have done in the first instance is to interrogate and give Tendaran an opportunity to respond to those allegations and then reach a conclusion whether this was uh, a marketing strategy gone wrong or whether there was, in fact, undisclosed um, communication that targeted or maybe uh, conferred preferential treatment mm -hmm. against a segment of the site, which in, in each case would have been unconstitutional for, it, for being discriminatory. Yeah. So in terms of the substance, yes, the governor is well placed to act. But whether he acted procedurally, whether he has acted procedurally, can only be uh, arrived at 
after Chandorana have been given an opportunity to explain their case. We have already seen Chandorana and some have argued already they have made a position in admission by apologizing and you know almost throwing under the bus this new hire saying uh, she's not proficient in English, it was horrendous. So in a sense they're not saying it wasn't said. It is there, the communication is there but they just excuse that with it's a new person who's poor in English. So haven't they admitted already? I think, to be honest, Chandrana's response is less than satisfactory for two reasons. One, the, the statement they issued, which passed the blame to a new recruit without explaining where they, that, that new employee got that philosophy from. Because, you see, we must contextualize, and they should not take Kenyans for fools. So the comprehensive statement that they issued is a practical sense market response because they have a niche and they need to preserve that. So if we say that was a PR exercise, it is not out of range, for, uh, you know, so as to speak. But I think the more important thing, which Kenyans are concerned and they ought to have responded to it, but they haven't responded to it more definitively or decisively, is to locate the source of this information that a certain critical segment of the society were going to receive preferential treatment. Mm -hmm. That, if you look at their two statements, that issue goes unattended. And then it raises eyebrows. Uh, it's, it's also as curious as the decision to state that communication itself is. Yeah. And when they say it was inadvertent, do you not think they should have then gone ahead to say what the intended communication was? Because we don't know still. Certainly. You know, they say that no one knows the mind of man except the Lord himself. Mm -hmm. But by analysis, we can, we can make some projection. One, this is a new employee that ideally ought to have been supervised. They, she can't know, the employee cannot know the, market, the marketing strategy that the organization has until, unless it has been explained to them. So there is reason to believe that there may have been some policy to direct or maybe to target a certain market segment. So Chandran, they ought to have admitted that and given a logical, rational explanation that says, listen, the intended communication was not captured as we had framed it. But to sidestep that issue and blame it on grammar, I think is to take Kenyans for fools, and that is what Kenyans are rejecting. Right. So in the event there's this official formal communication, because I can confirm you, so if we visited several of the supermarkets, Chandarana, they are operational throughout the day tonight. If they are shut down and this order is officially and formally in place, the directive is implemented by the police, what can Chandarana do after that? I think even before I respond to that, let me just uh, loud uh, Governor Sonko mm -hmm. for the, in terms of the political significance of that action. He captures the aspiration of Kenyans and also the constitution in, in, terms, in terms of being relentless in ensuring that there's equality and equal practices without discrimination in the country and especially in Nairobi County. So as in terms of political significance, that he has done very well. However, if he goes ahead and revokes the license of Chandrana without due process, then certainly they'll go to court and they'll ask the court to review that administrative action for want of, not because it's not merited, but because it was not, it did not follow the, the, the laid down procedural safeguards. So I think my advice to the government would be, the county government, to interrogate further and give Kenyans a more comprehensive statement. We want to know, is there a deliberate design to confer preferential treatment to a certain segment of the society as against the rest of the population or not. Already, the statement that that leaked uh, email is indicative of a movement towards that, favor, uh, uh, towards that preferential treatment. But whether it is dispositive of it, we can't tell until, uh, in, until investigations have been completed. So it would be better that the county government interrogates this matter further, invites the run to present their case, and then you can read between the lines and then make an assessment. Yeah. If they reach an assessment that, in fact, Chandrana was trying to implement a policy that was, in fact, discriminatory, even if they moved to court, the court would not be able to overturn that. Mm -hmm. So the court would be, would be testing any decision from the county government based on non procedural safeguards. Did you give them an opportunity to present their case, to explain? If, the, if you didn't, then that decision will be reversed and you'll have to start afresh. Yeah. And here we are seeing if, in fact, the intention was to do what it is they are now coming back to say they're apologizing for. It's intent. It had not yet happened. So in legal proceedings, does intention carry the same kind of punitive measures if something actually happens, uh, does? Actually, that's critical. If you look at the level of um, the discovery of this communication or the intention, it, the kind of response that the county government is going to take must match the action itself. I think, as a lawyer, that 
the regist- or, uh, revoking the license of Chandana may be, may be deemed to be excessive in and of itself because then there was a policy being developed, if at all, to target a critical, uh, uh, a certain segment of the society for preferential treatment. But it hasn't been implemented. It has been nipped in the bud. So maybe a warning can do, you know, there has to be some halfway measures before you take that drastic action of revoking alliances. I would not want to argue against revoking alliances based on the kind of employees. And of course, the business is a going concern. If they have over 1,000 employees and the business is impact on a million Kenyans, that is part of their interest. You know, it's a business, it makes profit. So first, it benefits the business. I wouldn't use that as an argument to shield Chandana from accountability. But I believe the, type, the kind of response that, should, that the county government takes must match the level of violation that has, you know, the progression. I think this matter had not progressed into actual viol- discrimination. It was just in being incubated. But it has been discovered and nipped in the bud. Yeah. So I think a stern warning or something, some kind of halfway measures would do, rather than a drastic action of an outright deregistration or maybe a revocation of their license. Yeah. And perhaps that maybe would speak to the back and forth and the dilly-dallying today. Because I spoke to the governor, his officials, they all kept saying this statement formally is coming out, they're going to be served, the uh, closure of the supermarkets will happen. It hasn't yet happened. So do you think they're scratching their heads trying to figure out how do we hinge this on the law? I think they should scratch their heads because if you look at uh, the design of governance that we have now, requires that you don't govern based on passion and discretion. You don't make decisions based on passion and discretion that you think there is a violation, then you jump into conclusion and you take action. No. You must interrogate, you must locate, and you must take an action that matches the level of violation. So the delay, although unexplained, may be necessary in terms of getting it right to avoid unnecessary litigation, to avoid an action, uh, a decision that may be considered to be excessive. But I think overall, Maybe in the coming days, a more decisive statement, a more conclusive statement will come out and Kenyans will get to know what really is going on within that supermarket. Okay. Finally, in terms of discrimination, uh, racial discrimination, uh, the allegations around this particular instance, do we have clarity in law in as far as how those processes should unfold? Of course, certainly. This constitution that we have is intends or seeks to inspire national renewal, disinherited, disinheriting the, whole, the, the old habits and old patterns and ordaining a new framework that requires equality, respect of dignity, and recognition of dignity, self-worth of every Kenyan, so that people feel that they belong. So if there is a, if there is a policy or a systematic uh, discrimination, then that law is disallowed, and the process is as follows. One, if it happens within the, uh, within the jurisdiction of Nairobi County government, they can take action as they have done, because I said in the beginning that enforcement of the constitution is the primary duty of all public officers and the state officers. Mm. So Nairobi County government doesn't need a primary, another, another law. They can rely on the constitution mm. to enforce, because when you are registering or licensing, you know, a business such as Chandrana, there is the presumption in law that they will comply with all national laws. Mm. You get. So if there is evidence that of non-compliance with, with the constitution, discriminatory practices, then they can take some relevant action. Okay. Secondly, we also uh, institutional commissions like the National Commission and, and, uh, Integration. and Integration Commission, yeah. Commission, what they're supposed to do, let them check this and try to map out. Let them find out within the businesses that we have, are there a deeper underlying problem not just within Chandran, but within all the businesses? Do Kenyans feel included? Do they feel equal? Do they feel safe? And what are the mechanisms or measures that can allow for anonymous reporting? Mm. You know, we don't know how this email was leaked, but at least it's a good thing that it was leaked because then now we get to know the issues that are going on in there. Mm. I think this is what governors, uh, governors and other state officers should capture yes. and seek to address. All right. Many thanks. Steve Thank Ogola, you. advocate. Always a pleasure. Uh, and Yusuf, uh, I'm sure your guests in studio as well will be weighing in on this one as uh, Chandarana will continue to try and figure how to get out of this one and skate if that is possible it's about time and we'll see what it brings out thank you very much uh, sophie i think now you have a chance to go and keep warm many thanks uh, for that and speaking about uh, our guest in studio we have another lawyer in studio with us that is ashua biko and communication consultant mark bichachi good evening gentlemen and welcome to the program so, Mark, let me begin with you. Away from the legal stuff, we're going to address that in the second part of this uh, program. But first, let's talk about the leaked mail itself. What does this say about uh, the supermarket chain 
And uh, the people are saying that the mail is some sort of a reflection of the boardroom meeting that these uh, supermarket officials have. And number two, the fact that they've even hired, you know, a semi-literate person. We've all seen that statement. It, it, the, the grammatical errors were very much, were very much, you know, open for everyone to see. What does this say about this supermarket in question? Uh, it says quite, quite a lot. Uh, first and foremost, let's understand that anyone in, in marketing is a, a public-facing uh, official. That means that they interact with the public and therefore mm -hmm. they are in charge of communicating to the public. Now, if this person whose entire job is to communicate cannot speak uh, English, that tells you that already we've got a racial discrimination problem. Why? Because if the person you are talking to, you have such a low opinion of that you do not need someone who can speak English to serve them, that tells you what their opinion is of the general uh, Kenyan public because mm -hmm. if I want to impress you Yusuf and you invite me to this show and I send you someone who can speak neither Swahili nor English it should for sure tell you what my opinion is of you and this institution and that must be understood as a first uh, front of, of, of discrimination in fact the second part it is interesting because I would really like to have seen that person be interviewed on TV and then ask ourselves the question was their qualification, the color of the, this side of their hand matching the si this side of the hand. That's what it seems like. The third, the, the third thing, Chandarana is acting very funny and trying to throw this intern under the bus. Yet the email clearly states that they are gift vouchers. Now, if they are gift vouchers, it means mm -hmm. there was a procurement manager involved. It means there was a finance manager involved. Mm -hmm. It means it has the, uh, the, the, the benefit of the support of the board because at the end of the day, someone has to sign off on it. Such an email could not go out without that, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing is this, mm -hmm. the third thing rather. If the email states that we are targeting white people, the insinuation has to be that white people are of a better class in the Republic of Kenya, in Chandarana's mind, than black people. Because if you are classifying black, black people, what you would say is they're LSM 16 or LSM 1, they're poor, they're rich, they're middle class, they're whatever. Mm -hmm. But in their minds, the white population cannot be so distinguished. It is one homogeneous uh, people. And secondly, how do you determine to give out prizes on the single basis of color? Isn't that apartheid? That if you walk it to Chandarana today and you are the right color, you deserve a prize. Whereas if you are my hue and tone, then you do not deserve the prize. That is discrimination per mm -hmm. excellence because the truth of the matter is yes. if there was a competition of some sort, we mm -hmm. would talk about a, an equal thing. But mm -hmm. when you say that these raffles, these gifts are targeted at white people, that is discrimination. Mark, we're going to probe further their communication strategy if they have one and perhaps the chain of communication uh, that supermarket. But let me bring in lawyer Ashoya Biko. Lawyer Ashoya, we're going to talk about the legal stuff shortly. But first, I'd like to hear your opinion on this. The fact that the supermarket has, you know, apologized twice. They've written a lengthy statement on both occasions. And they've also promised to take action against the said official who wrote that mail. Is that enough? Or are Kenyans, you know, asking too much from this chain of supermarket? I think, I think this evening, let me play the advocates, um, the, 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 the devil's advocate, mm -hmm. and uh, probably come to uh, and say something about, you know, to be on the side of Chandarana. Because uh, I think so much has been said. Um, I know Kenyans expect so much uh, uh, that uh, ought to have been done by Chandarana to try and mitigate um, uh, probably something that they never anticipated would take the angle that it has taken. But then um, I would want to say that um, morally, I think Chandarana have done the best that they could have done to try and mitigate uh, everything. There's been so much communication. You remember the, the, the very first time this thing came out, it actually came out on Twitter. And Twitter and, uh, and, and Kenyans on Twitter were so harsh and so hard on Chandarana. Mm -hmm. And they really came out to try and explain themselves. They've even, uh, 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 you know, given uh, an official apology, you know, from, from the management of Chandarana. But then it looks like Kenyans are not having enough of it. So from strictly on a moral uh, point, uh, point of view, I think Chandarana have done their best. Mm -hmm. They've done their best to try and explain themselves in as much as my friend Bichachi will try to say that they're trying to yes, throw and, the... and I'll give him And I'll give him a chance to react to that shortly. But yes. first, uh, hold on to that thought. The question is, how did the whole Chandarana communication 
uh, problem begin. We have some infographics uh, for you. We're going to get that on your screen shortly. That is the making of Chandarana mess. Yeah. Um, for Let's me... Let me, let me just go through the infographics uh, shortly for our views. And on July 26th, that is 2018, communication with racial remarks leaks uh, followed by massive online criticism. Then on July 28th, that is just two days after that, Chandarana Food Plus issues public apology in a statement. We're going to get quotes from that statement shortly. And on July 29th, uh, 2018, Nairobi Governor Mike Mbuvi Sonko announced he has revoked the license of the retail store. And on July 30th, that is today, Chandrana Food Plus uh, writes to Governor Sonko apologizing for the communication goof. Now over to yet another infographics that we have for you. Uh, the promotion communication has been widely interpreted to be discriminatory. That is what the food chain says. And Chandarana Supermarket, they say, has reviewed the communication and agrees uh, the message inadvertently profiled some of our customers. They continued saying that the management has commenced a disciplinary process on new employee who authored the communication. The process will help address the matter conclusively. They further said that Chandarana Supermarket is, leading, is a leading employer in Kenya with 1,246 employees on its payroll and uh, only 35 are expatriates. And of course they've uh, concluded by saying that their business touches the lives of 1 million people uh, in Kenya. Mark, are you satisfied with that apology from the supermarket in question? Eh, I'm not, because mm -hmm. slavery equally employed millions of Africans, in quotes. Mm -hmm. The number of people you employ does not necessarily shield you uh, from being racist. And to me, the racism here is clear. The racism is also clear in, 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 in the communication um, thereafter. What do I mean? The number one, they're asking for forgiveness, and yet they've not stated any action they've taken against these employees and those employees that participate in making this a reality. There's no way this particular employee was able to give those offers without uh, uh, due process. So they've, they've not paid that price. The second thing is the truth of the matter is we live in a country where the self-esteem of the Kenyan is sold every time to the highest bidder. So we must, as a country, take a stand and realize that you cannot be bullied in your own home. I lived in South Africa for a while, mm -hmm. and I was quite bullied by the white population because I lived in a predominantly white neighborhood for simply being black. I cannot uh, suffer the same fate in my country. That uh, Can you imagine walking into a supermarket next to a Caucasian person, and the Caucasian person gets a free gift, and you don't for this mere reason that they are Caucasian? That is racist. There is no way to put it. Devil's advocate, demon's advocate, advocate or Belzebub's advocate. Mm -hmm. You have to be blind, deaf, dumb, and crippled to say that you are siding with Chandra. Mm -hmm. And let me give uh, Wakili Biko uh, time to react to that. And Wakili, this is not the first time we've seen people who have been, you know, racially profiled in this country. It happened just the other day with the standard gauge railway. Now we're seeing uh, the supermarket chain Chandrana. I mean, don't you think that action should be taken now? Would it, be, uh, uh, would it be any different um, if Chandarana came out in the open today and said that, hey, we fired the intern who, uh, uh, who, who, who actually uh, uh, wrote that, um, uh, that email, we fired the manager who was uh, supposed to be supervising uh, the intern who wrote that email? Would, uh, my question is, would it be different? If you, if you look at what you've played uh, just a few minutes ago mm -hmm. and uh, how, things have, you know, how things have turned out from the day that... Uh, that email um, uh, came out uh, to the public to the day uh, to uh, to actually today when they've uh, actually given their apology twice um, it is my very honest opinion uh, and and from a very uh, moral point of view uh, that Chandarana have tried their best they have tried mm -hmm. their best to mitigate uh, issues as they were they've tried their best to uh, give uh, an apology uh, to Kenyans, in as much as probably the apology that they've given to Kenyans may not uh, be to the satisfaction of Kenyans. But then from a purely moral point of view, I want to presume, and uh, this is my very honest opinion, mm -hmm. that uh, Chandarana have tried their best. We yes. should not uh, be too hard on them. Mm -hmm. uh, as to the actions that have been taken by the county government, that is by, uh, by Mike Sonko himself, um, from, the, from, a very, from, from a very legal perspective, is mm -hmm. that Sonko, uh, uh, his actions 
are illegal. Yes. Wakili, would... Wakili, I think yes. I think we are jumping the gun. We're going to discuss that uh, shortly. Yes. Whether whatever Sonko did was legal or or or, or, or illegal. Yes. But of course, we're going to probe this uh, matter even uh, further. It's something that has elicited a lot of re a lot of reaction on social media. So many Kenyans are angry with regards to this development. Of course, this is the big story. We're going to take a very short break. We'll return with much more. Stay with us.